I'm going to tell you a little bit, and I'm going to try and keep it simple, this piece that you'll be hearing uh, quite soon called Cloud Chamber. Um, Cloud Chamber came from my own enthusiasm for subatomic physics. Um, when I was a, um, in my middle teens, I discovered this book called The Cosmic Onion, which was full of descriptions of these wonderful subatomic particles. And this, described as the most obesity, they called it, and there were quarks and muons, and they had all these wonderful names, and they talked about this thing called the vacuum state, which is due to the uncertainty principle, there I'm getting confused already, aren't I, but what, what I want to say is that all the time, all around us, there are these subatomic particles shooting through and shooting through the air at incredible speeds and energies, and I find that immensely inspiring, you know, the reality that we see with our eyes is not really what's going on, there's this whole kind of wave mechanics, quantum mechanics thing going on that we can't really see. Um, and I wanted to try and capture that in music. I wasn't so much interested, there's, there's for example, there's a project at CERN where um, they are uh, sonifying some of the experiments of the Large Hadron Collider. And um, I'm not so interested in that. What they're doing is recording data and then they're going and kind of listening to it in ways. And the, the emphasis there is on an audio display rather than an artistic. Um, performance. Now, what I'm more interested in doing is trying to bring the human performer and the subatomic world as close together as possible. And um, I was aware of this type of apparatus called the cloud chamber, and the cloud chamber is a relatively simple piece of apparatus, which you, um, it's, a, it's a glass box like this, you'll see it on the stage, it's a glass box about this large, and what you do is underneath the box you place liquid nitrogen, um, which is very cold, minus 200 degrees C, I think. Um, and within the box, you place a very pure ethanol, very pure alcohol, a lot purer than what you're drinking in your wine glasses at the moment, it's 90% pure. Um, and what happens after maybe 20 minutes is this astonishing temperature gradient develops within the cloud chamber, and this fine mist of ethanol rain starts to fall down. It's quite, it, it defies physics to me, ironically. When I look at it, I can't really understand it how it works, but it does. And then gradually as it goes on, you start to see these little white lines appearing in the cloud chamber. And these are actually the cosmic rays. And if you place a radioactive source close to the cloud chamber, you can see the radioactivity, the electrons, the beta particles. So suddenly, this world that is invisible to us becomes visible. And the other thing with the cloud chamber is you don't need to spend billions of dollars building a hadron collider. You can actually, you can buy one from America, which is what I did. Um, and I partnered with a company in America called Super Saturated Environments, and they sold me a cheap cloud chamber, or I should say they sold me a, cha a cloud chamber cheap. Um, <laughs> so I could see the particles, and then the next thing was I wanted, you know, obviously a human element, an acoustic element. This wasn't designed to be a purely electronic piece or some scientific experiment. Um, and the, the violin just felt to me, um, when I was thinking about these particles shooting around in the air, these, 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 that I, I could almost hear, 
I have a very mild um, visual uh, audio synesthesia. I can almost hear the sound of something like a violin, really. Um, and the violin for me as well, it, it kind of exemplifies energy. I know instruments can mean different things to different people, but that thought of the bow scraping on the string, you know, there's, there's a great deal of energy in that. Um, so I wanted to put together violinistic subatomic particles. Now, I do actually have a scientific background, so I understand about visual recognition systems. So immediately I could take this cloud chain, put a camera over the top of it, and I could have a visual recognition system which was developed by um, Antonio Caramonte and Anna Troisi with Eduardo Miranda. And this system essentially, it can track maybe a quarter of the cosmic rays and the radioactivity moving in the cloud chamber. And it turns them into parameters on a synthesizer. I'm sure people nowadays are all aware of what a musical synthesizer is. You can kind of create new timbres, different types of sounds. Well suppose you actually put one of the knobs, controls on this synthesizer, within kind of a very rough control of these subatomic particles as you recognize them using the visual recognition track a tracking system is a better description. Well, that's what we did. So now what we can do is for about a quarter of the cosmic rays and the particles in the chamber, we can pick up um, their track and we can send that as parameters to the synthesizer. So we've got the particles creating music, so that's, that's part one, so that's good. Well, creating sounds and rhythms, it's not exactly Mozart that you're hearing, you know, but this is, but this is I find them interesting. So then, then we have, okay, the violin. Well, I can write a violin score, and I can incorporate parts of that score where I say to the violinist, okay, I want you to kind of listen to the particles in this section, and actually improvise within certain parameters. So that's, I can do that as well. So that's what I've done, basically, is there's a, um, about two thirds of the piece is scored with the violinist, and a third of it, I've given him instructions in different sections about how to improvise with the particles. And then the, the last kind of piece of the jigsaw, really, that makes it, the one element that makes it very interesting for me is it's live. That's taken a heck of a lot of work to actually have the live subatomic particles do one of the hardest pieces of work in this. The other element is I want the violin to have an impact on the cloud chamber. So, duet is a strong word, but an interaction. I, I may be a duet, maybe because he's interacting with the sound as well. But the, the, a violin, if you put a violin, any instrument of that, through a microphone, what do you generate? Voltage. What is a voltage? It's electricity. What can electricity do? It can deflect ions. So in this cloud chamber, as the particles shoot through it, those little tracks I told you about, they are made up of charged ions. So what happens? We connect the violin into a, a voltage force field generator in the chamber. So as well as hearing the music of my score, the ion tracks kind of feel it and will actually be shifted vertically by the violin. It's a fairly blunt instrument, but it works. The activity does increase as the violin gets louder. So this was this kind of completed the vision of what I wanted to do. It takes a lot to keep my interest. It takes a lot. It really does. I need to, I need to really, as much as I hate the stress that this piece has caused me, um, it's really been it's, it's really taken up all of me emotionally, intellectually, artistically. It's used everything my scientific past, my musical inspiration, every part of me has been incorporated into this. And I've learned a lot about the, you know, what you can actually do live on stage and how difficult it is to do these, um, to use scientific apparatus on stage. Something about scientific apparatus, I realised this today. Scientific apparatus, all right, I mean, a synthesizer or a mixer or whatever, they're designed, you take them on stage, you switch them on, all right, they've been tested. So they work in a stage environment, they work immediately, no problems. You know, if you took your piece of Yamaha equipment on stage and you switched it on and you had to wait 20 minutes and you hoped that the lighting was right and you hoped that maybe the liquid nitrogen wasn't being warm too quickly, you know, you'd, you'd take it back, you'd say, this is Yamaha's crap. Unfortunately, scientific instruments and scientific stuff isn't always like that. It's often used in these kind of lab environments where you've got lots of time, you're on your own, no distractions. And I've had to translate this into a room full of you guys, full of lights, full of people sound checking around me. It's been quite a challenge, but it's, I, I hope you think it's worked, and um, I hope you enjoy the performance. That's what I have to say.
Um, well, I'm, I managed to follow my own score, almost, mm -hmm. which I thought was quite good. No. We've overcome many technical and practical hurdles to bring the performance together, and I think what's striking is the beauty of the particles, the beauty of the subject particles, the ionic radiation as it passes through the um, super saturated, saturated environment, and to generate music from that is very exciting. I'm very pleased to be a part of it, and mostly I'm grateful to Alexis for allowing me to be a part of it. The performance is completed, and um, people seem to have really enjoyed it. It's very hard when you're behind the laptop, kind of all the apparatus around you, to really see what's going on. But had some really great responses. Um, I'm really happy. No disasters. John played brilliantly. Kathy got everything right and did it all very nicely, and uh, looked extremely pretty. And um, I thought she was going to shout something at me when I said that. And it all went really great. So, um, that's, I'm really happy. I mean, and uh, what else can I say about it? It was, the chamber kept on showing the particles, which was good, because um, so that's one of the difficult bits. And um, we could see the particles, and they made sound. And I'm, I'm very relieved it's over.